Hello everyone, so I've been wanting to try some uh, video tutorials for a while and uh, but I didn't want to create the whole thing from scratch as I was doing it because uh, you know a lot of mistakes can happen and that's just kind of annoying so instead I thought I'd try out a tutorial where I put the file on master and then I kinda go through how it works and that way you can still get kind of a good idea but I'm not going step by step through it and hopefully that'll also make for a shorter tutorial but at the same time, it might not be quite as good as one from, say, 1.2SC or Bifu or any of those other really good uh, video tutorialists. So this one is uh, kind of emulating the uh, winning and losing conditions from a melee map. And a lot of people uh, can't use just the regular melee uh, options for one reason or another in their map. So this is kind of another way to do that. So to start off, um, I created these two uh, Boolean variables. So to do that, you would just go right click new variable. You go uh, switch the type to Boolean, which is right here. And then um, since I want one for each player, I switched it to an array, and then I made that a size 15 since that's the maximum players you can have. So I made one for uh, if a player has won the game and if they have lost the game. So these start off as false, and this will just help me kind of keep track of who's won and who's, losses, who's lost, and I can use that in uh, conditions later. So this is uh, for if a player uh, leaves the game, how it usually uh, makes them lose like that. So I use the uh, the event player leaves game, and I believe this one started off as something and I switched it to any. And then uh, here I have my two uh, variables that I created over here, and I want to make sure that both are already set to false so that they don't bother triggering otherwise. So if they do, I go ahead and set that they now have lost the game, and I end the game in defeat. That's the uh, end game for a player action. And you want to switch that to triggering player, just like up here you're switching them to triggering player. And then um, this is a custom made uh, action definition that I'll be going into detail later. It's this one right here. But uh, first, I'll go to uh, this one. And basically, what this win uh, action definition will do is because there's no need to ch really check if anyone's won until someone's uh, lost. And what this will do is it'll cycle through each player that hasn't already won or lost and see if all of their enemies are defeated yet. And if all of their enemies are defeated, then they win the game. So uh, this is the uh, lose condition from uh, losing all of your structures. So the event is unit dies. And then the condition is a number of living units in unit group. And then you switch uh, the unit group to units in region matching condition. And most of this stays the same except for this part right here where um, you have to change structure to required. So you just click on that a couple times until it goes to required. And uh, you set it equal to zero. So they'll lose when they have absolutely no structures. And uh, if I didn't mention it before, this needs to be triggering player before, uh, I believe it was any. So again, we set uh, that triggering player's boolean to uh, true that they lost the game. And this was just something I did earlier where it turned out it wasn't needed, where it uh, the text would pop up and say so and so has lost, but it turns out it already does that when you use the uh, end game uh, action. So again, there's the uh, win game, which I am now going to go into detail. So uh, I guess first off, to create a new action definition, you can right click, go to new, go to uh, action definition, and they're not that different from uh, actual triggers themselves. They're pretty easy to use. So um, this wasn't really that necessary, but I went ahead and clicked create thread. 
um, local variables, uh, one for the player that's being checked on. And um, this is actually something I made for a kind of a custom loop type dealio because normally I would just do a pick each player or something like that. But uh, I have another uh, one I'm using to pick each player for for the loop. And I found if I try to combine pick each loops that usually something screws up. So by doing my own kind of loop with the repeat actions, I can uh, get it to work. And this is kind of a uh, local variable for the one game, so it's not quite the same as this, but uh, it's similar. I guess I'll rename this so that it's a little easier to see. And that should update it in any of these. Um, so we have a repeat action. Uh, I just picked 15 times so that it doesn't, uh, there's no reason for it to go past the 15 players, which is the maximum you can have in any game. Um, so I have, this is just something I use to keep it organized. It's an action group and you can uh, label it whatever you want. And it just makes things more organized. So while I'm going within this repeat loop, I'm checking if that player, which it starts off at 1, and I'm checking if they have lost the game already or won it already, because if they've already done either of those things, there's no point in checking for them. And then uh, this is the second, the actual pick each player like I was talking about, that um, I don't want to have two of those within each other, because it'll probably just screw up. So we have pick each player in uh, the player group is allies, enemies of player. So enemies of the local variable player that we have, that we made up here. So it'll start at one and then uh, I'll show you later, it'll increase with each uh, repeat. So um, just checking if the that enemy of that player has uh, lost the game or has not lost the game. And if someone in that group has not lost the game, then it switches this one game local variable to false, though it's because it had it starting at true. So it kind of assumes they won it first, then it checks if that player has any out any uh, enemies who have not lost. And if there's an enemy that has not lost, then it uh, says, well, then you haven't won yet. So that's the kind of action group there. And then this is the other part that comes after uh, I separated it into another action group to kind of make it more clear. So I modify uh, the player here. So it goes to player two. And then um, here probably wasn't, didn't have to do this, but I wanted to break the loop early if, uh, if, if it gets to a player that isn't being used. So let's say you're in a, if it's checking for the players and uh, player 13 isn't even a player, then it'll just go ahead and break the loop and go on to this next part. So uh, that is the condition status of player. And then the player S is the this one here. And if it's uh, unused, then it'll go ahead and stop doing all this repeat stuff. And even so, it'll stop at player 15 anyways. So this is um, what will trigger the actual win now that we got all the information we need. So this is a pick each integer loop. So it'll, basically that's uh, going for each player again. And I checked again, see if that's an unused player or not, because if it's not even a player, there's no point in doing this. And then if the local variable is true, true again then uh, we want them to win the game uh, if they lost the game then of course we don't want them to win so that's the global variable here and this is if they because we don't want them to basically win the game twice that'd be kind of silly and but then you'll see here we immediately set it to true so that this shouldn't trigger twice and then uh, again that's the thing that was unneeded with the text, and then we end the game in victory for uh, the player that had all these conditions true. 
So I did uh, go ahead and test this with uh, just the simple uh, test document. And here I went through and destroyed all the buildings and it worked fine there. I haven't actually tested it in multiplayer yet, so it could be that it's a little bit messed up. Uh, but if I were to test it in multiplayer, that would mean this wouldn't be a lazy tutorial, which it is. So I'll leave it up to you guys. Feel free to ask questions and let me know if this was actually helpful to you. Just going through this and again, I'll have a... Uh, this file posted with the uh, video or link to it and um, if there's any other uh, kind of not too crazy uh, things you're wondering about the editor I'm thinking about maybe making more of these lazy tutorials maybe kind of beginner to intermediate level stuff probably mostly triggers I do know uh, I'm getting a little bit better at data but I'm still far from an expert, so you probably won't be able to ask me any expert questions on data. All right, thanks. Bye.